Hey, I'm Jono. This is my best friend, Jason. In 2019, I was working full-time as a lawyer and Jason was studying full-time in law school. We bought our first camera in July 2019 and started developing an interest in photography and videography. And so we decided to turn this passion of ours for photography and videography into a wedding photography and videography side hustle. Fast forward five years later in 2024, this little side hustle of ours has made over $200,000 in the year. And so in this video, I wanna break down exactly how we got to this point in our journey and hopefully give you guys some insights if you're looking to do the same and reach that six figure milestone as a wedding photographer or videographer. So before we get into the meat of the video, I wanna share with you guys some exact numbers from our journey. In 2020, we shot three weddings and totaled $1,625 for the year. In 2021, we shot two weddings and totaled $6,995 for the year. In 2022, we shot eight weddings and totaled $35,525. In 2023, we shot 27 weddings and totaled $134,420. In 2024, we're scheduled to shoot 40 weddings, which comes to a total of $211,420 for the year. With our experience and our journey in mind, I now wanna share with you guys the five tips that I think contributed most to us being able to get to this point in our journey. And hopefully you find it useful if you're also looking to hit that six figure milestone as a wedding photographer or videographer. Tip number one is start with the end in mind. So when you're starting on this journey, have a clear idea of what sort of wedding photographer or videographer you want to become, and then work backwards to determine what steps you need to take in order to get there. For us, when we were starting our journey and we were looking for more established wedding photographers and videographers to draw inspiration from, we mainly considered two things. Number one was their style. Did we like the style of photography or videography that they use for their clients? And number two was their price range. What sort of prices were they charging their clients? Because we knew that if we could work towards getting to the same quality of work that they achieved, then we would also be able to charge similar sort of prices down the track. So rather than starting this process completely blind and having no idea what to do, you now have some sort of goalpost to aim for. You have a good idea of what sort of wedding photographer or videographer that you want to become, and you now know what sort of steps you need to take in order to get there. For us, for example, we were heavily influenced by wedding photographers and videographers such as White and Rivery for video and Chris Turner for photography. We consumed their YouTube content, we watched all their tutorials, we bought the same cameras and lenses that they used to capture a wedding day. We even bought the LUTs and presets they sold so that our work could emulate their style. And our first few wedding inquiries came after we had just shot three weddings because those couples could see that we had a very clear style from the very beginning. And that wouldn't have happened if we didn't start with the end in mind and were clear on what sort of style we wanted to create from the very start. So as a beginner, sit down and have a deep think about what sort of wedding photographer or videographer that you want to become. Start building up a list of established wedding photographers or videographers either in your area or outside your area where their style really resonates with you. For us, for example, we really like that candid, natural, adventurous style of photography where you're kind of just documenting the day and really trying to capture those raw emotions or you might wanna go with a more editorial version. Have a think about what style of photography or videography that you wanna adopt, because this will heavily influence the way that you go about building your portfolio and your brand. Tip number two is to build your portfolio. Ask yourself, if you're about to get married and you looked at your current portfolio, would you be comfortable investing three to $10,000 in yourself? If the answer is no, then think about what steps you need to do to create a portfolio that will attract that type of client. Based on our experience, I just wanna share with you guys our portfolio building timeline because hopefully this will give you a good idea of not only how long it might take for you to build out your wedding portfolio, but also what steps you need to take. June 2019, shot my very first wedding for a good friend of mine from primary school who couldn't afford a wedding videographer. June 2020 to September 2020, did a free engagement slash couple shoot for friends and family every weekend for two to three months to build our initial portfolio and more importantly, learn how to interact and direct couples. Managed to lock in three wedding shoots between October 2020 and December 2020 by asking family and friends if they knew anyone who was getting married soon who didn't have a wedding videographer or photographer. Bought the Chris Turner preset and White and Rivery LUT, which significantly elevated the quality of our initial body of work. By December 2020, we had a library of high quality content 
from three weddings and eight engagement shoots that we could then use to launch our wedding photography and videography brand to the world. So as you guys can see, this whole portfolio building process took us a good year and a half to actually get it off the ground. So be patient with the process, invest in your craft and continually look to improve your work and you'll get to a point where your portfolio will be able to attract high paying clients on a consistent basis. Tip three is to promote your work. For us, when we were first starting out, the two main ways that we promoted our services was number one, starting up a wedding Instagram page where we could start uploading our portfolio of work. Number two was creating a website using Squarespace where we could upload our work and also take inquiries from interested couples. Another thing when you're in the process of starting to promote your services is be intentional with the brand that you wanna create. When you're going about curating your Instagram feed or developing your website, have a think about why would a couple choose you as their wedding photographer and videographer, as opposed to another person. For us, the brand that we wanted to create was something that was really approachable. We were really trying to attract couples who were just down to earth, wanted a really relaxed and fun wedding day, and they wanted their day to be captured in a candid, natural and timeless sort of manner. And so when we went about building our Instagram page and our website, the entire brand that we created was focused on that theme. And finally, just based on our own experience of the last four years of doing this, I wanna quickly share with you guys some of the biggest movers that I think contributed most when it came to us promoting our services and attracting couples to want to work with us. We created a library of high-performing Instagram reels and we recreated them using our wedding photos and footage to gain traction and eyeballs on social media. Over time, this developed into a social media marketing strategy for us, which included uploading one video post per week and two photo posts and using relevant hashtags every time. After every wedding, we would create a sneak peek album and trailer of the wedding day and collaborated with a couple on social media so that we could get in front of their family and friends and drive more referrals for our business. And every chance we took after a wedding, we would ask the venue that we had shot at how we would be able to get on the preferred suppliers list. Oftentimes when it comes to a wedding day, the couples will typically book their venue first and then they'll look for their photographer and videographer. And so oftentimes they'll just ask the venue, do they have a list of photographers and videographers that they would recommend for that venue? So before we move on to the next point, I just wanna let you guys know that we've recently launched our six-figure wedding photographer and videographer starter kit. It's basically a roadmap of how we went from zero to six figures as wedding photographers and videographers. And it contains all the practical tips, secrets, and templates that we used over the last four years to get to this point in our journey. And so if you're interested in learning more about the kit, I'll leave a link in the description box down below for you to check it out. Tip number four is to learn how to package up your services. Once a client comes across your work, either through social media or through your website, and they want to inquire about your services, you wanna have a suite of packages that you can offer them. For us, when we were beginners, because we had absolutely no idea what we were doing, we would go onto the website of existing photographers and videographers in our city, and we look at the packages and the prices that they were charging their wedding clients. Over time, as we started to work with our own clients, we were able to seek their feedback and amend our packages according to their feedback over time. So it's important to remember that this process of crafting your packages is a constant process of seeking feedback and improving upon your services. I think personally, this is one of the key skills you need to learn as a creative entrepreneur, the skill of being able to really listen to your clients and seek their feedback and amend your products and services according to that feedback over time. I don't think there is any cookie cutter approach to doing this. I think you can use someone else who has experience, even someone like us, as a basis for your packages, but then I encourage you to seek feedback from your own clients and amend your services over time. Just to give you guys an idea of what our packages look like, our packages include hourly coverage of the wedding day, deliverables, which for photos is an online photo gallery, and videos is a highlight film and raw clips of key moments throughout the day, such as the ceremony, reception speeches, and first dance. I recommend presenting your packages in a nice looking PDF. I think this is a great way to raise the perceived value of your services because think about it from the couple's perspective. If I'm receiving packages via email or a beautifully presented PDF with some examples of your past work, which wedding photographer or videographer would look more attractive to them? And finally, tip number five is to focus on delivering an amazing client experience. Really care about your couples and the experience that they have. Don't just treat them as a client and you as their photographer or videographer. We like to treat them more like a friend because if you take care of your couples, they will take care of you. 
Our wedding photography and videography business has grown significantly over the last two years. And a big factor to that is that we focus on delivering an amazing client experience to our couples and they go ahead and tell five or six of their other friends who are also getting married soon. It's a snowball effect and it's something that will work naturally in your favor if you're a good human being to work with. I see so many in the industry who chase the money and really commercialize their services and treat their couples as just another booking. But at the end of the day, it's all about creating memories. These are the memories that your couples will look back on for the rest of their lives, and you get to capture it for them. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you found some value from this video. Hit that like and subscribe button if you wanna see more of this type of content and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.